Let's get going. Pei Zion Ahmed Aleph. 87A1. It's a pretty easy dot, except for the beginning part. So let's begin. We learned that every carbon Pesach requires that you need to register the mina on the carbon Pesach. You need to register on the Pesach. What happens if somebody else registers you on their Pesach? Number one, is that even possible? I have the Chiruv to bring to be part of the carbon Pesach. How could somebody else come and register me on it? Well, the answer to that is Zochin la Adam Shaloi Bifano. You could be Zaycha for a person, not even without his knowledge. So, in other words, if you're doing a person a good deed, you're doing the person a good deed. In this case, he needs to belong to a carbon Pesach, right? I'm doing him a good deed. I'm allowed to essentially become his Shaliach, his his messenger, even without his knowledge. That's can great. I, can I tell you, we do it all the time with our kids or our parents, right? I remember when my father right. I sold his, I sold his Pesach stuff without him knowing or acknowledging because his mind wasn't there. Correct. Correct. Very well put. So Isaac is making a very good point. We do this for, ch- for parents. Parents do this for children. And as we're about to see in this Mishnah, husbands Husbands and fathers do this for their children and their wives. But since the wife is a person in her own right, and ultimately, if two different people did this for her, her husband and her father, the question becomes, whose Pesach does she eat by? Is she considered registered by? Because at the end of the day, while you can do something for a person, the person themselves, it's totally in their das, in their thought processes. So what they want to choose, their offered choices now, they get to choose. How this all works is the discussion of this Mishnah at the beginning of the Gemara before it gets esoterically into uh, Agavita. So here we go. Says the Mishnah. Ha'isha, a wife, is man shuhu bebeis bala. While she's in her husband's home, shacha talel bala, the husband can slaughter the pace of offering for her without her knowledge. She doesn't have to know that he's doing it. It's a given that a husband slaughters a carbon pace for his wife. The shacha talel, okay. And her father also slaughtered the carbon Pesach for her. So this woman who's living by it with her husband, her husband slaughters for her, and her father back at home slaughters a carbon Pesach for her also. She eats from her husband's offering. Says Rashi, the top Rashi on the page, 87A1. Because Mistam, most likely, the assumption is that her das, her thought, is to be counted with her husband. Calls a man, as long as she doesn't verbally say, no, I really want to be on my father's Pesach. But if she should say it verbally, then it goes by what she wants because it's truly tied to her das. It's just that the others can be zaycha shalai in front of. They can do. They can act as her messenger for good, not in front of her. So this is a case. She's living with her husband. Her husband swears for her, and then her father swears for her without any other knowledge. We assume that she wanted to be with her husband. But therefore, Ragel Risha and Lassa is the base of Eel. Since the first Yomtev, she spends in her father's home. And this is the tradition, the Jewish, this is the Jewish tradition that the first year of marriage, 
the young couple eats by the wife's parents. This is where it comes from. This Mishnah right over here. It is from right here. Hulk of Regalish of the first Yontiv Lasis Pavesamir. In the first Yontiv, they make the Yontiv in the house of her father. And if and now that they went to their father's house, Shachat Allah, Via and her father slaughtered a Pesach for her, Shachat Allah, Dala, and her husband also slaughtered a Pesach for her, Toichel the Makim Shehi, he writes it. She's allowed to eat wherever she wants. Because on the one hand, she's with her husband. She wants to be with her husband. On the other hand, she's happy to be home. And the first young to everybody knows that if they spend at home, she spends it back at home with her, with her parents. Maybe she really wanted to eat together with her parents. So that's the so she has the choice. She, there is no stomach. There is no standard way of thinking. There's no assumption on how she is thinking. Since there's no way to assume how she is thinking, she's a free agent and she gets to choose. What's the problem with this, everybody? The problem with this is, when do you have to choose by? You have to choose at the time of the slaughter. So what's going on over here? She <laughs> has a key with the... Ah, Daddy, don't give away the answer. Just look at the, I know the Gemara is going to answer that. That's what the Gemara is going to ask right away. But what does this mean? She has to choose. There has to be a choice. So what's going on? Yes, um, an orphan whose guardians, whose administrators, he has two administrators of his estate that were appointed by the court system. They each slaughter a carbon pesach for him. Yaakov and Makim Shuhu writes, uh, he's allowed to eat where he wants. What is very, this is very problematic. The reason why the court assigns administrators on the estate is because he's not yet bar mitzvah. He's still a cotton. Okay. A cotton is not a bar das. A cotton is considered like a cherish shite of a cotton, like a deaf. A dumb person and a cotton and a child. A child is not a bardas. If he's not a bardas, that means he's not considered somebody that can make decisions. How can he choose who he wants to eat from? We've just said by the wife, she gets to make a choice because at the end of the day, we have assumptions about her choice if she lives in the house of her father, if she lives in the house of her husband. But if she's not, if she's by her father, we say. So there are no assumptions, so she has a choice to go where she is. These are children. So you're going to tell me, okay, the assignment were not, was not a child, was an adult. Well, if it's an adult, he himself is responsible to bring, he's 13 years old, he's responsible to bring his own car to Pesach. So what is he doing relying on a bunch of apitropes? What is he doing relying on his administrators? So let's see what happens when the Gemara gets there. I actually do not know the answer to any of these questions. But I'm just, Maybe, Go ahead, Daddy. It's, maybe it's a cotton shagia So he's already old enough to maybe. make yes. understand. So he's old enough to make a to make a choice. So that that comes out that Yidea Lachinov that's old enough to be educated yeah, yeah, is yeah, some yeah. sort of das, but if Yidea is some sort of das, but not complete das. So then what is that hybrid position? Because when it comes to business deals, he's not allowed to do a business deal, even though he's reached the point of education. So the question is, where is the line? Exactly, where is the line? I don't know the answer yet. I don't know the answer yet, but it's clear that the Gemara is going to have to tackle this. Goes further. Eved shall shnei shuften, a slave that belongs to two partners. This would be an Eved Kenani. A, a Gaisha Ebed, a Gaisha servant, who by definition now has the laws of a Jewish woman, and just like Jewish women are mechuyib to bring a cover face up, so the Ebed also is mechuyib to be on a carbon face up. Here's the rule. La Yachel Mishnel Shneya. He's not allowed to eat from either one of them, because each one of them is a half owner of him. So you don't know who really is the responsible party. And again, the Gemara is going to have to go into this. 
me because and especially the second half here me shechetzia beebed chetzia bedchayim one who's a half a slave and a half of a free person which means he belonged to two people he brought himself out of one person or one person freedom so he's free on every Sunday Tuesday and Thursday right but he's an Evan every Monday Wednesday and Friday so what's the end says the Mar- says the Mishnah he shall not eat from his rubs or it's from his owners his master's offering he should only eat from his own offering as a ha- from the free side of his situation again this is very hard we'll get to it in the Gemara I don't even know what the Gemara yet says um, about all of this so let's go take a look anyways the Gemara says we're being the Gemara says the Gemara we have a case where a woman is spending Pesach the first Pesach in her father's house she gets to choose she gets to choose whichever covered Pesach she wants to eat from the Mishnah's Lashen it seems to say that when does she make her choice as to eat from her husband's or to eat from her father at the time of the eating ah you needed to be part of the carbon registered at the time of the slaughtering says the there is a retroactive determination what exactly is this there's a, a famous running mach like is throughout the entire shots of yesh Barera or ain Barera, which is known as and this is important yesh Barera means what i do now is hovra dovar lemafreya let me repeat that hovra dovar lemafreya lets me know is hovra lets me know retroactively what my thought process was so in other words if i if the wife decides to eat from her father's carbon pesach now it is retroactively assumed that her thought process was to be registered on the carbon at the time that it was slaughtered that's called yesh pereira and pereira says we only go mikan lahaba there's no hoover double in my we can only go from now and forward what you do now does not tell us does not the factor of what you were actually thinking way back in the at the beginning of the whole situation but over here where we say that she's allowed to choose and simply it seems to be saying that you're allowed to choose at the time of the eating even though you needed to be registered on it at the time of the slaughter we say therefore whatever whoever she chooses to be by for the eating is yes pereira hoover brother lima freya it retroactively determines what she was thinking back at the time of the slaughter that's a question well, that's, that's, that's a question that the guru is asking that you're going to no. say that is mashma yes pereira but we pass him we pass him and pereira actually daddy not here not here right here this is not this man the yama is saying this is the man the yama is saying the mishpas is telling us yesh pereira that's what it's saying the gemara is going to ask now the gemara is going to say on 87a2 87a2 my right sir no he says but you're explaining the mishnah that she chose at the time of eating at the time of eating no i'm going to tell you on 87a2 that no she chose at the time of the slaughter yeah. and no since plan. she chose at the time of the slaughter, it's no longer a conversation of yes pereira and pereira do i say retroactive determination or i don't say the mission is not talking about it whatsoever but the truth of the matter is this is a very hard answer to understand because if you look at the mishnah the mishnah almost clearly the easiest way to read the mishnah is clearly it's talking about the time of eating it sure looks like it's at the time of eating second of all if if it's not at the time of eating it's at the time of the slaughter then what's your what was your hava meaning that she didn't have a choice of course she has a choice she's a person in her own right the only reason why in the first case 
we say that we assume with Stama Date, we assume that she wants to be with her husband is because she's living in her husband's house. But this place actually is in her father's house. So now there is no assumptions. On the one hand, she wants to make her father happy. On the flip side, she wants to make her husband happy. So there is no assumption. So now she gets to choose. So what was the thought? What's the thought process of the Mishnah? So the truth of the matter is, this is what we would call a, a shoehorn terrace. It's a shoehorn terrace. That no, it's Bishas Shrita. She made up her mind at the time of the slaughter. The, in other words, because the, in the, all we're saying is that the Mishnah is not a definitive proof of anything. That's really what we're saying. The Mishnah is not a proof of anything. This answer really is, is if you think about it, is a really a schwer answer. Anyways, says the Gemara of the Rimenu. Let's take a look at our Mishnah and compare it to another Baraiso. Isha, regular Isha, and Echelis Mishalavi, a woman in the first shunt of after a wedding when she's married, but she's going to went to, she's going to her parents' house for Pesach. She eats from her father's Pesach. No choices. Right there's the question. This Baraisa says there's no choice. She definitely eats from her father's house. Mikanva Eilat, from here and on, all the rest of the Pesach, writes a Echelis Mishalavi, writes a Mishalavi. She, if she wants to, she eats from her husband. If she wants to, she eats from her father. So you see, our Mishnah said she has a choice. This Baraisa says she has no choice. Says the Gemara, Loi Kasha. Khan, the root of the Leila. Here we're talking about one who's a wife who's eager to run back to her father's home for the first Shabbat. Khan, she ain't a root of the other one is where the husband is not, where the woman is not eager to run back to her father's home. So either the marriage isn't doing so great, so she wants to run back to her father, and so therefore, of course, she belongs, she wants to be with her father. Or, as we're going to see, there's another reason. Um, or, and, and the other way, otherwise, she's very close to her husband. She wants to be with her husband. She clearly wants to be with her husband. Now, now we begin the Agadita. Fix him, because it says, Oh, so you said, the ain of Kimoitzi Shalai. Then I became in his eyes like one who's found to be perfect. Okay, so we're, now we're going to start getting into Shir Hashirim, the Song of Songs, which, as you know, if you read the Shir Hashirim of Shleim HaMelech, the Song of Songs, it reads as, for lack of a better word, as a very erotic, chat, eight to ten chapter poem of a man to a wife. A man, actually not even a man to a wife, to an engaged couple. Okay, that's how it reads. But the, as you know, Rashi especially takes every pasuk and he turns and he explains the, the entire thing esoterically that what it really is is a conversation between Hashem and us, the Knesset Yisrael, the assembly of Yisrael, and the assembly of Yisrael to cloud to Hashem as a husband to a, as a. A, a, a groom to a bride and a bride to a groom in the words that we do when we when we put on tefillin every morning and we wrap it around our hands we say the ashtich li and I will bind the I will bind you forever the ashtich li the tzedek of a mishpat of a chesed of a rachman it's a beautiful words so now we're going to start breaking out these words also ye see the aim of kemoitzi shalom. And I became in his eyes like one who was found to be perfect. Kekala, like a bride, who's found perfect in her father-in-law's home. She settles into her fire in-laws, and they love her, and they think she's the greatest thing since Swiss cheese for their son. And she's eager to run back to her father's house to tell her father and mother, Wow, it's going great. My in-laws love me. I'm making you proud. My everything's going great. So now, Kibik Sib, like we learned, Bahoya Bayoy Mahu, and it will be on that day when it's a shem in our days. It should happen in our days. Bahoya Bayoy Mahu. No Mashem Hashem says, Tikru Ishi, that you, Klaw Yisro, are going to call me husband. The Lord Tikri Oi Bali. And you're not going to call me anymore, Master. 
In other words, our relationship is going to change. We're, we are no longer going to see HaKadosh Baruch Hu as a master. We're going to see him as our husband. Amar Rabbi Yechanan says, Rabbi Yechanan, Kekala Bebeis Chamil, like a bride in her father-in-law's house, the like Kekala Bebeis Chamil, and no longer like a bride that's in her father's house. As you know, Jewish marriage is broken into two pieces, Erisin and Esuim. Erisin is the first stage where they legally become a husband and wife, but do not live together. Then we get Nisuin, and at that point they come together, and then they're Miyachin, and they start living together as a husband and wife. So when she's living in her father's home, it means they got engaged. They got engaged, right? So there's one level. When they move to her, her, her in-law's home, as it were, to her husband's home, they're now completely married. So Rabbi Yechonin is saying, right now we're in the engaged portion of our relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We see him as our Bali, as our master. But Amir Tzashem, we're going to move into his home and we're going to be considered Ishi, like his wife. We're going to be his wife and he's going to be our husband. Intimate. Yeah. Very intimate, exactly. And talking about intimacy, that comes the next person. Achois Lonu Ketana. We have a little sister, the Shadayim Ela, but she has not yet developed breasts. Other Rabbi Yechanan says, Rabbi Yechanan, we are now on page 8783. Zu Elam. This is the province of Elam. This is the province of Elam. This is where Daniel, the, Daniel was with Nebuchadnezzar. He was in, this is where Shushan Habiro, Shushan Habiro is in the province of, 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 in other words, Boca Raton is in the province of Palm Beach County, okay, which is in the province of Florida. So, Zu Elim, which was merited to learn a lot of Torah, but were not merited to teach it. And we see that Daniel Taka learned the Torah, but he was unable to disseminate Torah as opposed to Nehemiah and Ezra and Nehemiah, who of course were able to go ahead and teach Torah once again to Klai Yisrael. So that's what it means. I'm a young, I'm a, we have a young sister who's sitting and learning, who's fresh, who's excited to learn, but has not developed that she can go ahead and teach. Ani I'm a wall and my breasts are like towers. Oh, now we've developed. Amir Rabbi Yechanan, Ani Chayma Zu Torah, the Shaddai Kamidolos and my breasts are like towers. Elu Tamidi Chacham and these are the Tamidi Chacham. The Rava Ama Ani Chayma Zu Knesses Yisrael. This is in reference to the assembly of Israel. The Shaddai Kamidolos and breasts like towers. Elu Botik and Yisiyos who bought the midrashes. This is the our shuls and our learning houses, which butter us like who who keep us. Exactly. In other words, as I've always said, we are unbelievable. I've always said that when, you, when I worked in Manhattan, one of the things that we marveled at was at 5 o'clock in the evening when you come out of work, everybody goes to the bar for happy hour. Right? They go for happy hour. They relax for an hour in the bar, in, 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 what do you call it? And then they go home. And then they go home. You ever watch a Jew come home? It doesn't work that way. A Jew gets out of work, he's like a bat out of hell. He's got to get home. He's got to catch Mincha Meirik. He's got to maybe learn. His wife is waiting over there for him to help. To help to, to, he should help do the homework and put the kids to bed. So when does he get his happy hour? The answer is Friday night in Shul. Shul is our clubhouse. That's why there's always a problem with talking in Shul. Because when do we get our, when do we get our happy hour? The answer is Friday night. Right? Or, as we all know, the famous rule of marriage, never let your wife know that Mincha Mayrev only takes a half hour. She needs to think <laughs> it takes an hour and a half. Right? Of course, that's the one problem besides the others of sitting Shiva, because when you sit Shiva, they discover that Mincha Mayrev is only a half hour. So, but, until then, what do you call it? The idea is, you're supposed to, that's, that's your time. That's your time. Ain't you but they're going to see us, you the midrashes. That is the houses of prayers and the houses of study. That's our clubhouse. And that speaks volumes. 
So even though there is talking in shul, and it's a problem in every shul, and we try to get everybody to be quiet, we try to be quiet. But you have to understand, why do we talk in shul? Because that's our place. That's where we come together. That's who we are. So even the talking is in the service of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Is in the service of God. Says the Gemara. It's a great, that's a that great argument here. for talking in shul. Yes, I, I, I'm only saying it over here. You know, right. <laughs> you're always, you're always, Charlie, Charlie, you, you have to, to be God in the cop streets. No, if you want to talk, you, yeah. still, you talk to God, not to... Yeah. Not I, I agree. To, to, so, to you know, I, when I would daven, when I was in right. Brookline, I daven in the shul with the rub, yeah. where Rabbi Soloveitchik was. There was no talking in shul. That's right. And there was no, no talking. talking. <laughs> Definitely so, during all right, reading but I to, the Parsha, yeah. that there was no talking. None. There was no talking. None. So, but I am going to tell you this. There's a great story. There's a great story with that lady Yitzchmi Badichev, the, the, the Badichevo. The Badichevo was, I think I told this story before, but I'll say it again, where the, the, the Gabba ran in and said, Rabbi, come on out. And he comes out and he sees that the wagon driver, that the wagon driver is changing the wheel of the car while he's wearing talus and twillin. So the Gabba says to him, the Gabba says to the rabbi, look, in the middle of that, in the middle of davening, he's changing the tire. What a disaster. And the Badichima looked at it and said, no, in the middle of changing the tire, he's davening. It depends on how you look at it. The Gabba right. said, in the middle of davening, in the middle of changing the tire, he's davening. There's a difference. So I look at it and say, yes, you're not supposed to talk in shul. Of course you're not supposed to talk in shul. But where are we talking? We're talking in shul. We're not in the bar at the end of the work day. Where are we? We're talking in the middle of talking. We're davening. It's great. Okay. Depending, that's, you always have to look at our job is to find all good in our people. Anyways, let's keep going. <laughs> now we're going to pick up. We're going to pick up some speed over here because it's all. I got it. We got to really get moving. So here we go. Metal to the pedal. Why does it say? We're again eighty-seven eighty-three. For our sons are like saplings, young trees nurtured from their youth. Our daughters are like the corners crafted in the form of the base of Migdash. Our sons are like saplings. These are the young men of Klau Yisrael who have not experienced the taste of Abeiris. They haven't developed the Taibo. The daughters are like corners. These are the virgins of Klau Yisrael. Even though they're full of desire, they're full of desire, they close their openings to their husbands. There's two shatim over here. They remain virgins until the night of marriage. They remain virgins until the night of marriage or in the early parts of marriage, even though they have great desire when they become a nida, when they see blood, they go ahead and they fight their urges and they tell their husbands, we have seen blood and we are not legal to you. The chen hu and they filled up like a bowl, like the corners of the altar. Our corners are full, providing from harvest to harvest. And again, it's the same idea. We're filled with, we're, fi we're filled with desire. Nonetheless, what do you call? We are careful of what we do. And in other words, here's a point. Don't take it for granted that, that people behave well. Just because it's the mitzvah, that's because you're supposed to do it. No. We praise you. We understand. HaKadosh Baruch Hu built us with desires. To fight your desire even once is a remarkable thing. I just want to quote Rabbi Sachs. Zechreinu Levrocha. 
in the introduction to that unbelievable book, which I advise everybody to read, The Great Partnership, Science, Religion, and the Search for Meaning. If you haven't read it, everybody should absolutely go buy the book. I'm not kidding. That book was written for the world, but it's really a Jewish book. It is a remarkable tour de force. He wrote it when Richard Dawkins, the great atheist, wrote his book saying there is no God. This was his response. The Great Partnership, Science, Religion, and the Search for Meaning. You can find it on Amazon. Absolutely, you should be. You will thank me afterwards. It is. It, it will change your life. Really, truly. In it, he writes beautifully. He said, you know what freedom is? Freedom, he says like this, every living thing has desire. To be alive is to have desire. Only human beings have the ability to make a judgment call on their desires and to say, no, I will not follow the desires. His next line is, that's freedom. To do what you want to do, I, because I feel like it, therefore I could do it, that, that's not freedom that's like breathing every living thing by definition has desire freedom is the ability to not be defined by your desires the ability to think is to look at your desires and say i'm making a judgment that no the ability to choose to make a judgment that's freedom i think really? that's why that's where you look at the difference between human beings and malachim Yes, very good. Human right? beings on a much higher level. Yeah, of course, so because my walk and my stand. God gave us the choice to make decisions. That's right. You and in me other words, God gave right. us freedom. Right. And God Malachi gave us freedom. Over. In other words, just because in, we're living in a world where if you feel like a girl, you are a girl. You feel like a guy, you right, are yeah, a guy. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not living in that world. No, a, but a uh, world that can think like that, a world thinks that's the definition of freedom. They've got it all wrong. That's the definition of being alive. To be alive is to have desires, crazy desires or otherwise. That's not called being free. That's simply following your animalistic desires. The ability to say no and to choose, that's freedom. And that's, of course, what this Gemara is. And that's why the Gemara here is crazy. The Gemara is praising it because we understand. If you get nothing out of today's year, but you go out and you buy the book, The Great Partnership, I will. you will thank me profusely. It is a, a remarkable book. Anyways, so we go further. We got a long gap. Let's go back to the original pasuk. Mechutov put in the form of the base of English. Elu ve'elu that teaches us both the young men and the young women. Mala aleim akosid the pasuk considers it ki elu nivna heichel be'bimehen. The zol they built they built the base of English in their days. If they act with kedusha with holiness and they build a house together based on holiness, ah, then. That's what in this week's parasha, in Parsha's Truma, happy birthday, Daddy. Happy birthday. What do you call it? What do you call it? My father's birthday, my mitzvah. Charlie, please make sure he gets an Ali in the Shabbos. Don't worry. Okay? I'm on it. <laughs> you got it. Good. The fix is on. Very good. Thank you. Happy birthday. Um, Thank you. Yeah, there you go. So, what do you call it? The Asuli Migdash. Make for me a Middash and I will recite in, in, in them. What is them? That's all the houses of Klal Yisrael. If your houses are made with holiness, there you find a Kaddish Baruch Hu. Okay, let's continue. The Perak Echo, the Smatu Abernabiyim. Four prophets prophesied the more era. The Godless of the Kulam, Hosea, and the greatest of them was Hosea. Shenema, 
Hashem first spoke to Hashem. It's a flight to Gemara, the Hebrew of Hashem, Dibur, Tehila. Did he speak to Hashem first? 87, 84. Was it to Hashem that Hashem spoke first? By Allah, I mean, Moshe, and Hashem, the common of him. From Moshe until Hashem, there was a lot, a lot more of him. Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Tehila, the Abur, the Bim, the Shinistab, the Boy, Saperik. He was the first and foremost of all the four Nabiim who prophesied in this era. The Elohim, Hosea, Yeshaya, Omos, Umicha. Okay, so now what's the story with Hosea? This is a remarkable story. There is an argument whether this story is allegorically, it all took place in the Buah and prophecy in his head, or in fact, really happened in real life. Okay, but let's learn it. Your children have sinned. He said to Hashem, Your children, you saw, have sinned. Hashem should have said to the Abishtah, They're your children, not my children. They're your children. They're the children of your favored ones. They're the children of Rom Yitzchak and Yaakov. Arose, encircle, and rose, arise your, your, your mercy for them. It's not enough that Hashem did not say it. But he said in front of my Baruch Hu, Baruch Hu, Master of the world, the world, the, world, the entire world is you, yours. Exchange them for another nation. So Amar Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Hakadosh Baruch Hu said, "Ma Esel is looking there. What am I going to do to this old man, this crotchety old man who didn't know that his job was to defend? That means even when they're changing the tire, they're davening to me. Even when they're talking in shul, they're talking. They, they're coming to daven to me. You see, I told you guys that's the way he's supposed to respond. What he called? Amar He said like this." Lech, go, the kach isha zayna, go and marry a a prostitute. V'hayilucha bonim u'zirmunim, and you're going to cause her to be her children's of prostitution. V'achin kach amulai, and afterwards I will tell him shulchami al panecha, send her away, divorce her. Imu yachel l'shloyach, and he's able to send her away. Afani eshalech as he shall, I too will send Klal Yisrael away. Shenema. Hashem said to Hashem, go take for yourself a prostitute and children of prostitutes, which simply means that she already has children out of prostitution. And he went and took Goymer, the daughter of Dibloim. Omer Rab Goymer, why was she called Goymer? She called Goymer Bar. Because everybody finishes with her, right? She was very popular. Bas, we're on other days now. Pays dying on the days, 8071. Bas, the Volen, he's the daughter of the Volen, the Dibara, Bas Dibara, a woman of ill repute, pr- the daughter of somebody with ill pr- repute. The Shmuelama, Shemesukim, the P, Hakal, the Devela. It means. That she was sweet in everyone's mouth, like a like sweet honey dates. She was an excellent prostitute. She was very popular. But called in the No, because everybody stepped on her, shredded on her like a debelo. So her house was very well tread. They wanted to finish off the wealth of Israel in her days. In fact, that's exactly what happened. And the king of Aram destroyed them and made them like dirt to be trampled upon. The entire economy of Israel was wiped out. Vital. Back to the story of Hosea. And she conceived, Goyman conceived, and, and bore him a son, and bore Hosea a son. The Yomer Hashem and Hashem told him, "I love cross Shemoy Yisrael, name him Yisrael. He oid ma'at pekadeti as the me Yisrael are very sahu. But in short time, I will revenge the blood of Israel upon this house 
of Yeshu. In other words, it has a double ocean. It means like this, that a censor that Hashem will sow, will, will plant. He's going to plant destruction and exile Klai Yisrael all over the place. And oh, and because we Yisrael, and I will terminate the monarchy of Yisrael. She had a daughter. No mercy. No, uh, no pity. For I will no longer pity the house of Kali so he that I should forgive them. But Tar Bain, and then she had another son, Bayoyma Kros Shamoi Loy Ami. You shall call him Loy Ami, Kiatem Loy Ami, for you are not my people, and I will not be yours. After the two sons and one daughter were born. Why have you not learned from Moshe, your teacher? For as soon as I started speaking to him, he separated from his wife because he always had to remain holy. You two should separate from this wife of yours, this prostitute wife of yours. Hoshea said to Hashem, with the Shalila master of the world, Yeshli Bonimi Menor, I have children from her. The Ain Ani Yoichaloid see of the Lakish, I cannot remove her nor divorce her. Two reasons. Number one, number one, he didn't want his children to be stigmatized. Because if he left her, everybody would say, Oh, he left her because because she's a prostitute and these kids aren't his. So he left her. Right? He said, I'm not going to stigmatize the kids. Number two, okay? And I'm going to tell you something. From here, you learn something unbelievable. You guys want to hear Psaka Locha? I'll tell you an unbelievable Psaka Locha. And I know one of the players of this. There was a guy in there to who was married to a woman. And unfortunately, she was playing around. And they had a daughter. And he suspected that the daughter was not his. So he went to Rabbi Yoshev or Rabbi Shlem Zalman, Arbach, I don't remember which one, I think it was Rabbi Yoshev, and he said, can I give her a DNA test to determine her parenting, her parentage? So he said like this, this is an unbelievable Gemara, there is a Gemara that says, somebody died and he left over 10 sons. Nine of the sons were illegitimate, and one son was the only legitimate son, who therefore was the Yairish, the inheritor. They went to whichever Rav was, and the Rav said, Everybody take sticks, go to the cave, go to the grave of your father, bang on the, on, the, on the grave, bang on the grave, and whichever one of you gets answered, you're the legitimate son. So the nine sons who were illegitimate took sticks and went to the grave and started banging on the grave. The legitimate son said, I cannot embarrass my father that way. I just can't do that. Forget it. I'll lose the money. And so the rub over there, I think it was Rabbi Shia, but I don't remember who, says, ah! You're the real son, you inherit. The problem with that is, is that that's not the way you give out money. That's not the way you give out money. In Chayish Mishpat, that's not the way you can give over the money. So you know what the Rishash says? The Rishash says that the Gemara is talking about that they did the DNA test of Rav Haigoyim. Of Rav Haigoyim in the ninth century. The story was like this, that in the ninth century, there was a couple, they got married, the wife was pregnant, and the husband went overseas to go on business, and he took his servant along with him. Unfortunately, overseas, the guy did business, did very well, and he passed away. The slave went ahead and said, I'm the son. I'm the son. This was my father. And he took over the business. Anyways, back at home, back in Eretz Yisrael, the wife gave birth, the child grew up, and went looking for his father. And he came to Egypt, and he figured out what happened. And he said, you're not the son, you're the slave. And they said, that's ridiculous. So they went to Rav Haigoyim. Rav Haigoyim went, and he dug up a bone of the dead father. And he took blood from the son and the slave. And he put the blood on the bone, and only the son's blood sank into the bone. The slave's blood did not sink into the bone. Paskin Rav Haigoyim, from here, that 
the son is this young boy is actually the son. You're a, a charlatan. You're not the thing. And gave over the business over to the son. That is the first recorded DNA test in history. Rav Haid, the DNA test of Rav Haid. Now, said Rabbi Yashub, I believe it could have been Rav Shlomo Zaman, said that proves, listen, that proves that you could do a DNA test to determine paternity in Alocha. But I don't want you to do it because right now your daughter has a cheskis kashrus. She's clean. She could even marry a Korean Godel. Why would you go ahead and pull her out of her skate and give her a stigma and stigmatize her? If it turns out she's not your daughter, she's a mamzer. She's a mamzer. She can blow you up in the car. She's going to have a problem getting married. So don't do the paternity test. She stays in her chazoka or kashras. She can even marry a Korean Godel and leave it at that. Because what are you gain? Same thing over here. Hosea said, I don't want to divorce them. I don't want to stigmatize these kids. I don't want to stigmatize the kids. If I leave, then everybody's going to say, because the kids are illegitimate. That's why I divorced her. Not going to do that. Not going to do that. Right? And the other thing is, okay, and, uh, and the Meiri says, another beautiful thing, when one has children, one should not be divorcing. The Gemara calls when the, a couple gets divorced with children that the Mizbeach is crying. The Mizbeach cries tears when there are children involved in a, in a divorce. Because more often than not, what comes out of that is not good. The children are left with terrible emotional problems and sometimes you have to live life not for yourself. When you have children, your life is not your own. Your life is your children's life. And everything, you sacrifice everything for the sake of your children. So, so, Hosea said over here, Hosea said over Now you, whose wife is a prostitute, and you, whose children are children of prostitution, and you have no idea whether your kids are actually your kids or the kids of other men. And still you have Rachmanis and still you love them. And this was your response that go switch him for another nation. Yisrael, Shehei, Banai, Israel, that are my children. The children of my tested ones. Abraham, Yitzbenei, Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, who all got greatly tested and kept the faith. And who constitute one of the four acquisitions that I made in this world. Torah, Kenyan, Echad, Torah is one Kenyan. Dixit, Hashem, Kononi, Reishis, Darkai. Hashem has acquired me the Torah from the beginning of his path. Shemayim, Ba'aretz, Kenyan, Echad. The, the, the heavens and the earth are one king the said base the base of is one king the 87b2 87b2 as it said this mountain which is right hand acquired you saw king and we call you one king in the said amzu kanisa right we say it in azyoshia Amzu Kanisa, this people which you have acquired. So now the Abishah continues with Hashaya, the Ata Mata, Havira Bin Umas Acheres, and you tell me exchange it for another nation. Even she other Shekhata, when Hashaya realized this terrible Avera, Omad Lavakish Rachman Al Atma, he stood to, and pleaded mercy for himself. Instead of pleading for yourself, Beseech mercy on all of Klai Yisrael. Because I have decreed three terrible decrees against them because of you. And from here we learn, if somebody has an ace rot sign, if somebody is, has, has a problem, you don't pray for yourself. First you pray for the entire nation because you're part of the entire nation. 
And then, but then a be saying, by the way, everybody, so, you know, as part of this nation, I've got this minor problem over here, please help me. Oman the BK Shrachnim, Hoshea stood up and was BK Shrachnim on God's Paiso, Bitu Gezeira, and he annulled the Gezeira. The Hisko of Rochan, and then Hashem turned around and started to give him a Brocha. Shinema, Vahoya Mispa Bene Yisrael, Kechol Ayoy, the number of the children of Israel will be like the sands of the seas, will be like the sands of the seas. Vahoya Mekoyim, Ashe Yom Elohim, Loya Mem Atem, and in the place where I said, where it was said, you are not my people. You are the children of the living God. And the children of Yehuda and the children of Israel will assemble together. We'll be back again as one nation. And I will sow for myself in the land. I will plant in the land for myself. And I will have on the unpitied one. The Amarti Loya Ami, and I will say to those who are not my people, Aliato, you are my people. Beautiful. Oh Rabbi Yachana. Oi Lo Lurabonus Shimakaveris is Baler. Woe to authority which buries its holders, holders, its holders. Shain Lakhod called Nobi the Nobi, because of the fact not one single Nobi to lay Pikah Arba Malach the Yama. Who did, who did not survive the four kings. The Nevi'im of our people, the prophets of our people, did not have it easy. People don't always know this, but Yermia, the great Jeremiah, passed away in prison. He passed away in prison. A Jewish king, the Jewish kings imprisoned him because they didn't like what he was saying. Shinema, Chazoin Yeshayo, the vision of Yeshayo, Ben Amos, Asher Choza al Yehuda B'Yerushalayim, in the days of Uzziel, Yosef, Achaz, and Chizkiel, kings of Yehuda. The truth of the matter is the kings of Yehuda, at the end, they kept dying one right after the other. The, who were obviously prophesizing that HaKadosh Baruch was angry and he's going to destroy the base of English. People are ostriches. They like to put their heads in the ground and not hear bad news and not see things the way they are. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard to accept bad news. But that, of course, is the way, you know, that's, you, that's Teichacha. And then if you accept it in time, right, you can change things. Other Rabbi Yochanan, the name Maz Zochi, Yerobah ben Yoyah, Shmelech Yisrael, the Hinoi Semachi Yehuda. Why did Yerobah, the son of Yoyah, the king of, of Yisrael, merit to be listed with the kings of Yehuda? With Nei Shalakiba Loshon Ahara Al Amos. Because he was not, he did not accept slander against Amos Hanavi. How do we know that he was listening with the kings of Yehuda? Like it says, "Devar Hashem Asher Hoya El Yehoshe Ben Ori Bimei Uzi Or Yosem Echad V'Chizki Or Melech Yehuda Who Bimei Yerabam Yerabam Ben Yosh Melech Yisrael Who Minolam Eloi Kibaloi Loshin Harod Dixim By Yishlach Amtsei Koyim Beisel and Amtsia the Avoy the Zora Priest of Beisel. El Yerav Melech Yisrael Leima Kosher Alecha that Amos is conspiring against you. Ksiv because it says Ki Choyam Ar Amos Bacherem Yomus Yerav that will die of the sword. Now this couldn't be because Yerav's great grandfather was given a nevuah that his line would last four generations. Yerav was only the grandson was not the great was not in other words was the great-grandson. It was actually in Yerubam's son who took him over that that this that this Nabu actually made and I almost didn't say Yerubam. He said base Yerubam. The house of Yerubam will be will die by the sword. But Oma Yerubam said Chas v'sholam Oma oisit tzadikach. God forbid that this righteous man should say this. The im Oma and if he did say it Ma'eseloi, what can I do? Shechina amaloi, the shechina, the nebua, the 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 prophecy that he got told him to sell. In other words, even though Yerubim himself was no great tzaddik, even he recognized and revered the tzaddik. Eighty-seven B three. Eighty-seven B three. We'll just go a little further, then uh, we'll pick we'll, we'll pick a spot to stop. 
Even at the time of his anger, the Holy One, blessed be he, the Kodesh Baruch Hu, remembers his attribute of mercy. As but I will no longer pity the house of Israel. That I should forgive them. Even though I will no, I will no longer pity them, that I should forgive them. So in other words, he was it's as if I could was trying to arose his own midasarachni. For Amar Rabbi Elazar, why he galak of his baruch as he saw the ban or umoys elu kedesh he saw to a little gayer. Hakadosh Baruch Hu was not megala, did not scatter Klal Yisrael to all four corners of the of the world, except in order to gather converts onto us. Shenema v'zar iti v'ati ali ba'aret. And I will plant for myself in the land. Klum Adam Zreya saw. Now does no man just plows a small amount of a saw. El Lahatnis Kamakairin, except that a lot a large amount should grow. So so therefore, Akadish Baruch Hu wanted the Jewish people to grow through the they commit through the convergence of the Gentiles. Rabbi Yochanan Mehocha Viri Khamti, and I will have pity and I will have pity as Loyuham on those who are not my people. And in fact, Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Meir came from Gairin, the greats of my people. Um, and uncle is Hagar, obviously. Um, Rabbi Yechina, Mishun, Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Yechai, my Dixiv, Al Tashlein, Eben, El Adonav, Pen Yekalkolo, Baal Shemoto. Do not slander a slave to his master, lest he curses you and you'll be found guilty. Dixiv, Dor Oviv, a generation that curses its father and does not bless its mother. What's the connection between these two psukim that are written one right after the other? Because you want, it's, a, it's a generation that curses its father. That's Imo Loyubarek and doesn't bless its mother. Al Tashlein. You shouldn't slander them. You should slander them. Ella. Even a generation that curses its father does not bless its mother. You should not slander the slave to its master. You should not, in other words, speak bad to Akadish Baruch Hu about, about this slave, this nation that's behaving like a bunch of slaves. In other words, don't go say, look, in the middle of Dominic, he's changing the wheel. Say, while changing the wheel, he's dominating. Okay? In other words, I'll teach him me no one. How do I know? May Hosea, from Hosea, because Hosea went ahead and first slandered Klai Yisrael by saying, take another nation, and our Kodesh Baruch Hu didn't have to teach him the least name, the lesson. Don't speak that way. Only speak good about the nation. To HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we are the advocates. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants us to advocate for the nation. Only see the good in the nation, never see the bad in the nation. Very good. We'll stop over here. We're up to 87B3. Amir Rab Oishio. We're going to get.